Welcome back, and if you're just joining us, I'm Kim Morgan, and I'm here with Quentin Tarantino to present the second film of our secret agent double feature, Hammerhead. This is actually produced by Irving Allen, who uh, uh, produced the uh, Matt Helm movies. Yes. And at the time, um, one of the uh, series of books that a lot of the Secret Age fans really liked was a, a series of books by this author named James Mayo on the character Charles Hood. And in particular, like the Ian Fleming fans really liked uh, the Charles Hood books because they were written very much in the style of Ian Fleming. And I'm a big fan of this movie, even though I don't like Vince Edwards particularly as Charles Hood. But we like Vince Edwards. I like, I'm a, actually quite a fan. Murder uh, by Contract. No, Murder by Contract. The Killing. The Killing. City of Fear, is it City, yeah, City of, of Fear? Yeah, City of Fear. even going with the 50s stuff. I like him in De The Devil's Brigade. I liked his 70s uh, therapist show, Matt Lincoln. Yes. You know, and especially some of his 70s TV movies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Death Stock, which was sort of uh, uh, the TV movie Deliverance. Uh, was really good, and Firehouse with him and Richard Roundtree, which is very mm -hmm. hard hitting. Anyway, uh, Vince Edwards is not well cast. He's in, not well cast, but I'm not sure if he's not into it or if he's just, was he, I don't know what, I can't tell. You yeah, know, I, I, here's the thing. He, the film is a really cool film because it's it's very 60s, and it's one of the best. As it's far, very 60s. No, it's very <laughs> 60s, and he's very not 60s. Yes. He's, he's very much this Eisenhower, a uh, 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 secret agent running through this Carnaby Street world. Mm -hmm. Now, that almost sounds interesting I know, when I describe it, and mm -hmm. that, that could work, but I don't think it's on purpose 100%. Mm -hmm. Rather than steering the movie towards Vince Edwards, they just go off and make their own movie, right. which is this f f flying, wild 60s movie that uh, in its own minor way, you know, is almost as satirical about the 60s as Bob and Carol, Ted and Alice. Almost everything that happens in the movie is a satirical bent on a happening Well, especially of the, the, time. the opening scene, they yeah, yeah, get yeah. right to it, where there's the whole art scene with yeah. the, uh, what, the big hamburger? Yeah, with well, the, 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 the hero sandwich with the <laughs> woman yeah. in there. Yes. But like, oh, that's really, that's all easy to do, but yeah. it's all really well done. And it's, it's very well and done. And it's very clever, you know, and the director is uh, David Miller, who I'm a big fan of. You yes. like uh, Midnight Lace with Doris Day. Yes. And I am a big fan of uh, uh, Captain Newman, M.D., mm -hmm. with uh, 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 Gregory Peck and Bobby Darren and Andrew Dickinson. And, and he, everybody's and he, a big fan of yeah. Lonely of the Brave. Lonely of the Brave, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but this movie, there's a hipness to this film and almost, the, and then the movie is constantly commenting on its own, on its own hipness, yet, Vince Edwards is not part of that commentary. <laughs> no. One of the reasons I love the movie is Judy Geeson yes, is wonderful. fantastic. I mean, I think it's one of the best, if not the best, performance by uh, like an actress in a you know like the, the actress that's in a secret agent movie tagging along with with the hero. It's you know one of the things about the film that works really good is like the movie is in its own. Vince Edwards is in an Eisenhower bu bubble, but the whole movie is in the '60s bubble, and the movie kind of puts up with the Charles Hood character, but really is on board with Judy Geeson's character. So she's almost like the lead in the movie. I agree, and she's actually, because he's kind of so stiff, she looks like she's having fun. She actually looks like she's having fun making this movie even. Well, it's, she's mean, got, yeah, no, no, I agree. No, she's got kind of, you know, she's got kind of the Kathleen Turner role, all mm -hmm. right, in, in uh, Romancing the Stone, where she's doing her job and his job yeah. at the exact same time. And there is, is even an aspect, by the way the movie happens, the way she keeps kind of blundering in to the drama and keeps like uh, uh, injecting herself into the situation and into the adventure, which is not too dissimilar from the way uh, Jill St. John's character is in Diamonds Are Forever. In fact, almost exactly if yeah. you think about it, all right? Uh, except they did, uh, Hammerhead did it first. But because Judy is so good in the movie that uh, she actually reminds me, and it even reminds me of the movie to some degree, she's a bit like Barbara Streisand's Judy Maxwell character in, in What's Up Doc. Yes, she is. But just yeah. trapped in a 60s secret Asian movie. She just keeps head, <laughs> you know, flailing herself into the adventure. And just like in What's Up Doc, the movie is on Her Barbara son. Streisand's vibe. Yeah. And it's and and Ryan O'Neill is decidedly not as funny as he is. He, the movie's not with him, it's with her. 
And I think consequently, it's the same thing in H Hammerhead. Do you think it was meant to be that way, or did it just sort of it just kind of became that way based on I think it just Vince Edwards. I, th I think I think well, I think it's a combination of of, of him being strangely anachronistic and not kind of being with it and her being so with it and so captivating. But everybody's so into him. Yeah. All the women are into yeah, him right, in that movie. Yeah. I mean, he's a handsome guy. What is, well, you know? well, that's the one part I buy, all <laughs> yeah. right? Because he's a handsome guy. <laughs> but he walks into the showgirl's room. Yeah, and I know, like, that's oh. a crap. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, oh, we must mention that Diana Doors is in this oh, film also. Oh, of course, yes. Diana Doors is fantastic, and I can't wait to bring up uh, Beverly Adams, but I'll wait for the mid-show break to talk yes. about that. So without any further ado, we're going to get back to the most controversial <laughs> movie of the festival, <laughs> David Miller's Hammerhead, starring Vince Edwards as Charles Hood, uh, It Girl Judy Geeson as Sue Trenton, and a whole other cast of groovy people. Hammerhead. See you mid-movie. Okay, everybody, you're in the middle of Hammerhead, directed by David Miller, starring Vince Edwards and uh, Judy Geeson. Vince Edwards isn't doing himself any favors in this movie, but the movie isn't doing him any no, favors no. either. It, it seems to be sending him down this bad road. Well, we were talking about his shirt. Well, that's the number one thing, because <laughs> here's the thing. All the women in the movie are dressed to the nines. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're... They, they, they look fantastic, whether it's Beverly Adams or Dinah Doors, but in particularly the cool Carnaby Street outfits that Judy Geeson wears, you just keep, you, you just keep waiting for her to change her clothes. Mm -hmm. And whenever she changes her clothes, it's gonna be in something else that's, that's cool, or something else that's wonderful. So the same people, the same costume designer, I would imagine, who costumed the gals also costumed Charles Hood, and it's, it's almost like they sabotaged him. One, they don't give him a suit. They give him a dark blue blazer, like he's in some yacht club, with not matching pants. I mean, they're, they're khaki <laughs> slacks. So he's wearing whitish, creamish khaki pants with a weird blue blazer. And underneath the blazer, he's got a white, white button-down shirt. But when he takes the blazer off, you realize it's short <laughs> sleeves. It's like he's, I mean, he looks like your dad. Yeah. Or a narc. Or a narc, yes, exactly. <laughs> or, or he works for the post office. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's them doing that to him. Yeah, I that's think. what I wonder. They've got to be doing that to him because, I mean, the whole point of, uh, um, of almost all these secret agent movies is that the secret agent is somewhat debonair. That's why they usually cast British guys or mm -hmm. European guys in these roles. There always was this vaguely debonairish aspect to him. Even Dean Martin, that kind of still, you know, he didn't think of the 50s because he had brought the whole Rat Pack act into the 60s. And actually in his uh, 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 white turtleneck and his blazer over, he actually looked kind of groovy, you know, yeah. uh, popping through the wrecking crew. Also, but they're doing that to Vince Edwards. I mean, think, at this exact same period of time, in 68 and 69, you're watching... Robert Wagner, all right, as Alexander Monday on uh, It Takes a Thief, wearing like baroni uh, uh, chocolate crushed velvet tuxedos. Or think of in like oh, Flint. Yes. You know, he, uh, well, he, yeah, well, you know, definitely with his uh, 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 turtleneck yes. that he has and everything. But I'm talking about on, just on television. Yeah. You know, Botany 500, baroni uh, tuxedos. You have. Robert Culp, all right, you know, wearing like like the all of Carnaby Street is coming yeah. out of his, uh, coming out of his closet. Whether it's you know whether it's his Nehru own closet, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Whether it's his own shit, <laughs> all right, that he's wearing from Bob and Carol, Ted and Alice, or it's any of the sporty stuff he wears on, in I Spy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unforgivable when like the fashions of the time are what they are, and your movie is what it is, and you put your guy in khakis and a blazer <laughs> and a short sleeve dress shirt. Here's the here's the deal. If Robert Culp had played Charles Hood, they would have made three Charles Hood movies. Yes. And he would have been great in the he world. He would have been. And yeah. he would have been great with Judy Geeson. Yes, he would have. Yeah. That's who should have played Charles yes. Hood as Robert Culp. Well, it's still great to watch, though. I I love the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I love the movie. I just, you know, and, and like I said, Judy Geeson always, always saves it. So, without any further ado, we'll see the end of our exciting conclusion. And uh, stick with it. It's, it's actually good. Stick with Vince Edwards. We're not... <laughs> Right? Yeah, I like it already. I don't need a, I don't need a pep talk. I like the movie already. <laughs>
Don't listen to her pep talk. I'm giving them a pep talk. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. They don't need a pep talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're digging it. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so, we'll get back to you digging it. And have her head. Vince Edwards, Judy Geeson, Beverly Adams, Diana Doors, Peter Vaughn. So that was Hammerhead, and thanks for joining us for our Secret Agent double feature, Hammerhead and the Wrecking Crew. That movie immediately made me a Beverly Adams fan. Now Beverly Adams, for those of you who know, she was a really interesting it girl from the 60s. She's, um, uh, she's John Cassavetti's main mama in uh, The Devil's Angels. Mm -hmm. uh, she's actually in quite a few of the Matt Helm movies. She's in the f first, the two earlier ones. She's even in one of my other favorite secret agent movies of this era, she's in uh, Kiss the Girls and Make Them Die, mm -hmm. which, is, which is terrific. And later, she ended up marrying Vidal Sassoon. And uh, she, has, uh, two, she has two grown-up children uh, that I know of. Uh, Oli Sassoon, who directed that Roger Corman financed uh, Fantastic Four that never got uh -huh. released. And then she's also the mother, uh, along with Vidal Sassoon, of... Uh, the father, uh, the parent of uh, Kat Sassoon, who was a kickboxing actress, did a series of movie, uh, kickboxing movies for wow, Roger Corman. <laughs> he's not this suave secret agent. He's very much this Eisenhower guy. Mm -hmm. He's not in tune with anything that's going on in the movie, uh, and you know, and 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 he's contemptuous of all the 60s stuff yeah. he sees. You know, he's you know uh, uh, the art opening that he has. Oh, you call that art? <laughs> Uh, well, that's what you'd expect, you'd expect him to say. When he pretends to, I mean, one of actually the, the cleverest things in the movie is the way he meets the big villain, Hammerhead, played by Peter Vaughn. Played it, wonderfully by Peter played Vaughn. Played wonderfully. Yeah. He's terrific in the film. And uh, uh, with a lot of conviction, by the way. Yeah. You kind of wish he was in it a little bit more. You wish he was in it, and he's actually mm -hmm. quite a formidable presence, yeah. too. I mean, he makes, you know, uh, makes an impression. Hood's entrance into his lair is um, Hammerhead collects erotica, but like, ancient erotic, a thousand year old, 200 year old uh, famous sculptures and paintings. And he has like all the great erotic works by all the great masters. And so uh, Hood is pretending that he's selling a collection of ancient erotica. So he brings in the erotica for uh, uh, Hammerhead to, uh, uh, to peruse and to, and to examine. And Hammerhead has this magnificent speech uh, about how in actual fact, pornography is the true art. Because mm -hmm. no matter what you can say, pornography is about truth. And it is what turns you on. And there is a, that, is an, that is everybody's ultimate truth. And throughout the ages, whether it's on a parchment or on a piece of rock or made with uh, 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 paint made out of leaves and tears, uh, you know, and they're drawing erotic imagery. That is what man is all about. And even then, even though he's supposed to be this like erotic like seller, all right. Even then, uh, 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 Charles Hood is like is making fun. Uh, uh, it's like, oh, you call that art? You know, he's he, he kind of making fun of all of this eroticism. And meanwhile, Hammerhead is actually doing a good job. He's actually convincing me yes. about his point of view. But his point of view is the movie's point of view. Like the movie is never on Charles Hood's point of view. It's almost like a alternative commentary track on what's yeah. not going on. <laughs> This is Kim Morgan and Quentin Tarantino wishing you goodbye. Goodbye. See you tomorrow.